Let's be honest, all couples have differences to work out, but for the spouses you're about to meet, the differences are bigger than most. That's because the men say they're attracted to other men, but have chosen to marry women anyway. And their wives say it's working out great. It's a highly controversial recipe for matrimonial harmony. Tonight, we welcome Alicia Menendez from our sister network Fusion to Nightline with this report. You're giving me all of this? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Husband and wife baking cookies together, the picture of domestic bliss. He's very easy to travel with. But the marriage of Tanya and Jeff Benyon is anything but typical because Jeff is attracted to men. <laughs> He's a very good looking guy. So then why not live your life as a gay man? It just felt like there was something more for me. It just felt like I was selling myself short. But you don't just turn a switch. I mean, <laughs> this is... No, no. It was a really gradual process. Jeff and his wife, Tanya, are devout Mormons from Salt Lake City, Utah. The only acceptable expression of sexuality and romantic feelings is within a marriage between a man and a woman. So Jeff has chosen to have a church-sanctioned marriage and control his feelings of same-sex attraction. My attraction really is mostly 90% towards men. I'll notice men nine times for every woman I'll notice. Your husband is sitting next to you talking about his attraction to men. How does that make you feel? I'm attracted to men too. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know that it makes much of a difference. And he could be checking out the girls just as easy as he's checking out the guys. Jeff says the choice he made to marry a woman is not an effort to change his sexuality. My sexuality isn't a choice. I agree with that. My, my faith isn't a choice either. This is a deep, deep part of me that's very important to me. So my challenge is to reconcile this, and I feel like I've, I've been able to do that. The two insist they're like any normal couple, even in the bedroom. So how would you describe your sex lives now? Perfectly Great, normal. yeah, enjoyable, <laughs> uh, normal, uh, fully functional. <laughs> <laughs> Though Jeff compares resisting his attraction to men to being on a diet. When I'm having sex with her, I don't fantasize about her being a man. An analogy I could use is I love donuts. I mean, I would eat donuts three times a day, but I desire to be able to fit in my pants in the morning too. But am I miserable? Am I lonely? Am I denying myself because I don't eat donuts as much as I might like to eat donuts? I'm not. And in fact, I desire to live a healthy lifestyle, and so I don't eat a lot of donuts. Jeff and Tanya are now going public, even sharing their story on a controversial new TLC special, My Husband's Not Gay. I'm attracted to my wife, for sure. And I'm definitely attracted to men, too. He's a good looking guy, for sure. Not gay, the show's stars say, because they do not act on their homosexual feelings, even if they are open about having them. Since I'm not seeking same-sex relationships, I don't think of myself as gay. The special follows Jeff and Tanya and other couples through the challenges of life in a mixed orientation marriage. So why do a reality show? Good question. Yeah, I think people are familiar with the idea about a self-hating, repressed, homosexual who's married to a woman but is kind of miserable. That's not my experience. But this is something that works for us. Their unique arrangement works for them now, but it wasn't always that easy. So where in the dating process do you tell Tanya that you're attracted to men? I was after a year and a half, which was in hindsight uh, way too long. It's either break up or tell her, and I didn't want to break up with her. He says, I have something to tell you. So I thought he's going to say, I love you, and instead, I'm attracted to men. And I did not know what to do with that, because I thought, OK, does that mean we're over? Did you tell other people? With one of my best friends, and I said, he told me he's gay. And she goes, I told you that twice. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take for you to come around on that? Six weeks, actually. Yeah. Because um, those six weeks were really hard. Uh, I asked tons of questions often not the right way. Some of them offended me. But from that rocky start, the pair came to an understanding about their differences and were married only months later. One of the things we joke about is I'm mad that she got to kiss more boys than I did before we got married. Still, the deck is stacked against them. Studies suggest 50 to 85 percent of mixed orientation marriages end in divorce. We've had divorces, for sure, and we've had <laughs> men that have fallen off the wagon and cheated on their wives. And Jeff and Tanya are not alone. 
Pret and Megan together eight years are the parents of three, and Pret says he also has same-sex attraction. What's your other favorite color? Turquoise. Pret finds support with his friends, a group of men who are all attracted to men. Together, they help each other stare down the face of temptation. What's the danger score? Uh, the danger scale goes from zero to four. A one on the danger scale is you notice, you look. A four pretty much means you're requiring restraints. Two and a half. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd go higher than that. For some people watching, they would look at this and say, you have a bunch of men who experience attraction to other men mm -hmm. hanging out together. This thing is a pressure cooker. Yeah, <laughs> I can see what you're saying. The heat actually gets turned down, ironically enough. Nightline first met Pret four years ago when he was seeking support somewhere else at a program that attempts to help men overcome their unwanted same-sex attraction. If I don't stay focused on what I want to become, I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to stay stuck. And then I turn to the, the homosexual behavior. In 2000, the American Psychiatric Association stated that conversion therapy programs are scientifically questionable and that reports of cures for gayness are not substantiated. I did experience um, definite levels of depression. And those days weren't easy. And I'm grateful for them because they've helped create the days that I'm living now. Experts say the depression he experienced is not unusual in cases like this. Studies show repression of sexual identity can lead to depression, anxiety, and even thoughts of suicide. Yeah, I think he's a great looking guy, but then I, I like the swimmer's build. My husband's not gay has come under fire by LGBT advocacy organizations. The president and CEO of GLAAD has called the show irresponsible, saying no one can change who they love, and more importantly, no one should have to. By investing in this dangerous programming, TLC is putting countless young LGBT people in harm's way. What do you think? He's a good-looking guy, for sure. But TLC argues that the show is actually about inclusion, saying TLC has long shared compelling stories about real people and different ways of life without judgment. The individuals featured in this one-hour special reveal the decisions they have made and speak only for themselves. It's a sentiment echoed by the show's stars. We're not going to get up on the pulpits and tell people what to do. All we're there to do is say, hey, this is how we live, and this is how we found happiness. We love each other, and there's not going to be anything that will change that for us. For Nightline, I'm Alicia Menendez in Salt Lake City. You can watch My Husband's Not Gay on TLC Sunday night.